Well, welcome to another polyprocessing tech talk. Today we're dealing with parasitic acid, also known as PAA. And in the room we have several guests, uh, two polyprocessing employees. One is our West Coast sales regional manager, Chris Shepard, and then our um, sales and marketing uh, director, Randy Zimmer. Welcome, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Um, I want to introduce also uh, from Envirotech, we have with us Phil Harvey, VP of National Operations, and also Jane Smith, Director of Marketing. So thank you guys for being here. Our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. So, you know, really, before we get started, Phil, could you tell us just a little bit about Envirotech? What is your brand name around PAA and a little bit about what your business is? And then we're going to get into some good questions and discussion around PAA. Uh, Envirotech Chemical is a uh, full suite biocide manufacturer. Uh, we're in the chemical business, and uh, our top performing chemicals are uh, parasitic acid formulas. Uh, we also provide uh, sodium chloride, uh, stabilized bromine, uh, and a couple other uh, non, uh, 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 non-oxidizing uh, chemistries as well as uh, some inorga- like other inorganic chemistries. Uh, our top performing uh, product lines are parasan, uh, biocide, and peregrine. Uh, and that's uh, mostly what we're here to talk about today. So what is PAA? Uh, PAA is short for parasitic acid. Uh, some would call it peroxyacetic acid. Uh, and it is a, uh, an oxidizing biocide uh, built on an organic uh, acid. Uh, so uh, what it should not be confused with is perfluoralkyl stuff. Oh, yeah, because I always confuse it with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of other PAAs out there, but uh, PAA is essentially uh, a, a new wave uh, super green bleach uh, that doesn't doesn't have any chlorine in it. So, so how does the disinfection work then from uh, the comparison to like sodium hypochlorite? How does that disinfection work? Oh, that's a great question. So basically, well, hy- hypochlorite is pretty similar, but like a Lysol or something or, that you see around the house has a tendency to... Uh, kind of inhibit uh, bacterial growth or slime growth or mold growth or whatever it is, uh, PAA cuts like a knife. So it donates uh, an oxygen to uh, the cell wall or the spore or whatever it is, and essentially it destroys the organism on contact, uh, which would uh, prevent it uh, from building up a resistance. So, there's, uh, so no uh, organism can form a resistance to PAA. Gotcha. Uh, so no superbugs here. That, that's, that's not something sodium hypochlorite can do, for example, because it's going to. Yeah, uh, hypochlorite will, uh, it, it, it's a less powerful oxidizer, and uh, it has a tendency to be a little less stable in storage. Um, uh, it works very similar to PAA, but just not as strong. Gotcha. So, so for maybe some of the sales guys out there, what are some applications for this PAA? You know, and I guess, is it going after sodium hypochlorite? Is that fair to say? Or where would places PAA fits? Uh, bleach, always, bleach is always going to have its, its market, um, especially in, uh, it, with smaller users and uh, with um, kind of less routine kind of tasks. But uh, anybody who's trying to uh, maintain uh, like food safety certifications, FISMA, um, especially uh, with uh, uh, some of the new laws that are out for uh, the Global Food Safety Initiative, um, almost everyone is going to go with PAA because it's a no-rinse uh, sanitizer and it has uh, just an abundance of label claims. So there's, uh, there's a million different ways you can use the stuff, uh, and uh, there's new markets emerging uh, almost every month. Um, some of those might, I mean, municipal wastewater, uh, hard surface sanitation, uh, food, uh, fruit and vegetable processing uh, on the outside. Uh, and then, of course, um, there's a whole line of parasitic acid that's specially made to handle ready-to-eat foods or raw uh, foods and raw materials. Yeah, poultry is a big one, right? Poultry is ma- absolutely massive uh, for us, uh, and uh, the, the industry has wholly adopted PAA as its, uh, as its uh, uh, intervention of choice. I've seen that. And then with the, you don't have to dechlorinate like you do chlorination, right? So you have to have a residual uh, minimization? Uh, most applications uh, for any kind of food contact uh, are going to be no-rinse applications. Uh, if you're using high amounts of PAA for, uh, like, say, hard surface or uh, for fruit and veggie wash, things like that, then you'll need to rinse uh, any residual PAA. But for wastewater, um, most applications will be uh, no, no neutralization of the chemical. What is the shelf life for PAA? 
Uh, shelf life is uh, much better than bleach. Uh, it's typically a year uh, for most of our labels. Uh, we've had product come back from the field that was over two years, especially in good storage conditions and still be in range. PA is, is typically uh, a, a lot uh, a lot hardier when it comes to storage, um, especially in uh, favorable conditions. Yeah, when you speak of favorable conditions and shelf life, I know that you know typically heat and UV are you know issues for sodium hypochlorite. Where does that fit with PAA? Well, the uh, bleach is gonna uh, is gonna degrade a lot faster under uh, heat and UV conditions, um, but uh, PAA still does have some of those limitations. We recommend storage under 86 F, uh, and uh, we definitely recommend to be stored out of the sun. Um, uh, opaque containers uh, typically won't have uh, as much of an issue um, being in the sun. So, you know, if it's if there's some skylights in the warehouse and it's shining down on it or something like that, you're not going to see any noticeable uh, drop in concentration. However, uh, if it's uh, if it's a bulk tank uh, outside directly in the sun, uh, then we could we could see some pretty significant uh, degradation over a period of months. And, and Marshall and Chris, you know, I might mention that we've um, we're taking a lot of their help and advice from the market in general and putting this into a position statement, a chemical position statement right. that you'll find mm-hmm. on our website. We talked about the concentrations that are available, and you mentioned um, that there were really a couple of concentrations. Um, 300 parts per million all the way up to 30 percent that were available but for you um most of the time it was up to 25 percent is really what uh, the customer is buying depending on the use is that correct absolutely yeah okay. uh, paa does present some challenges with uh handling and application uh for uh, engineers and, and and plant personnel so uh the concentration of chemical uh that you would use kind of depends on what your application is how much volume there is uh, how comfortable you are uh, with uh, with moving some of the chemical around typically uh the economy is better the higher tests you get so the you know the more concentration usually it's uh, uh, kind of better bang for your buck um, but uh, but on the other hand you know if, if you've got a small greenhouse that's only going to use you know five gallons every few months uh, then there's really no reason to to try and economize if you can uh, uh, if you can get away with it. So Phil, you know one of the things that we see a lot people calling in and there's the different labels on PAA. You see it with you know 25, 15, 20. Fit. I can't remember what they are, but there's like two numbers. What what do those mean? I guess it's hydrogen peroxide and and PAA. But what's the you know um, kind of what is the relevance to these different numbers and different ratio combinations? We get a lot of questions about that as well, and it. it let me just break it down for you like this. It's essentially going to be heavier peroxide when it's for hard surface sanitation, or uh, if you're if you're treating uh, areas or materials that are a little bit tougher. Uh, and then for ready to eat foods, uh, it's going to be higher acetic acid concentration, less hydrogen peroxide, and that's so we don't burn like sensitive things like chicken wing tips or uh, apple skin or things like that. Uh, so those guys want mm-hmm. less hydrogen peroxide. Makes uh, sense. So most of your uh, direct food contact uh, formulas of PAA are going to be less hydrogen peroxide. And then anything that's for, uh, uh, like, say, municipal wastewater, hard surface sanitation, uh, fruits, flumes, uh, closed with water systems, anything like that, it's all going to be it's all going to be higher test peroxide. Do PAA pro- uh, products have an odor? Uh, absolutely. They will knock your socks off. Yeah. <laughs> that good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, you're gonna see scrubbers on these. Uh, yes, that scrubbers would be uh, not unusual, especially with higher test in uh, higher volume applications. So uh, anything bulk or using multiple IBCs a week, um, you might see scrubber systems. Some of the smaller, some smaller systems uh, can get away with uh, things like push pumps, and then uh, we've got a, a special insert uh, dip tube that go that we can install in our containers that have a have like a companion uh like a screw in adapter um so we can you know eliminate uh, any kind of vapor uh, from escaping out of the drums but yeah it's i mean it's really strong stuff it smells like strong vinegar and um it kind of gets you you know it's one of those ones that kind of gets you in the back of the throat Mm. Um, so yeah it's it's very strong and um any environments that are uh, that are going to be high in pa vapor um, we would definitely recommend the proper ppe yeah, how do you measure exactly the PA, <clears throat> the PPA concentrations, and also can you measure vapor too? Uh, yeah, so we do have some options available uh, for vapor monitoring. 
Uh, it's usually kind of a go no go uh, scenario. If it, if a machine detects um, you know a certain amount of PA vapor, then it'll give you an alarm. Uh, and then for uh, for use concentration, so after you dilute the PAA to uh, you know whatever concentration you need for your application, uh, a number of methods now uh, that are available. Uh, we've got um, some handheld uh, batch type uh, uh, testers, colorimeters, uh, and kind of variants of that. Um, there's also test strips, and then there's also some amperometric probes uh, that can read. Uh, re well, they can give a, uh, an electrical signal feedback uh, based on how much oxidation potential there is in the, in the water. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about delivering PAA to your customer, um, we we always think because we're from the bulk side, that's where really where we you know shine with our tanks. Um, how do you deliver it? Uh, I mean, you can deliver it by bulk, but I think we were talking about earlier that you need to cut that bulk tanker into parcels or something. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, that's right. So uh, <clears throat> our specific UN number uh, limits our uh, transport to 400, oh, let's see, it's 1,000 liters, so 400 gallons. So we have to transport in specialized uh, equipment, company-owned, can't be contract, um, that uh, uh, that has a section, uh, that has the, the, the product sectioned off. And then we can uh, we can pump it off all at once, uh, just like a regular uh, bulk tanker would. So you can't have a common carrier come in and pick it up. You guys have to That's do it correct. yourself. That's correct. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be company huh. uh, company truck. That's company interesting. Trailer. Yeah. yeah, I think you were telling me earlier this is listed as a hazardous material. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's uh, uh, organic peroxide, uh, and it comes with a secondary corrosive. Uh, so it's very very reactive uh, to a number of materials. Um, but, uh, if you, uh, you know, if you follow the SDS, uh, then everybody's good to go. You know, speaking of which, you know, when it comes to the tank wall, you know, we offer a product that, you know, and you've, you guys have used, which is, um, to cut down on the oxidation is, um, is this chemical, I believe an oxidizer. And can you speak to that? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a very powerful oxidizer, uh, second only to ozone, uh, and followed closely behind by chlorine dioxide. Uh, so, so. <laughs> Oxidation is, is definitely, uh, has always been an issue uh, when storing PAA, especially in the plant. Uh, so so we, uh, we prefer uh, the OR1000 uh, liner on the polyprocessing tanks, and uh, we've been using them forever. Right. Since, yep. since, since the early 2000s. Yeah, a lot of people, we have other materials on the website. Of course, Marshall, people don't realize sometimes that polyethylene is carbon-based and, you know, will be attacked by oxidation. So we have a solution for that that extends the life of polyethylene greatly, you know, when it is an oxidizing chemical. Many of our customers know they can refer to our chemical compatibility chart online, and you could also refer to Envirotech's website for compatibility. But what containers or chemical storage tanks do you see your customers using, and what fitting material is recommended for PAA storage? Uh, typically, the, our customers will go with polyethylene. Larger customers, uh, usually something a little more technical. Um, we like to see uh, the polyprocessing gear with the OR1000. Um, a lot of times, we'll, for uh, high demand applications, we'll usually use stainless steel 316L uh, most of the time. Um, as far as fittings and uh, gaskets, we'll usually go with like a CalRes, ChemRes, SimRes kind of thing. Uh, there's Parares is also out there, uh, expanded Teflon, EPTFE, or um, Asahi makes a really nice gasket. Uh, it's like a EPDM or Viton with a with a Teflon liner on the inside, uh, which which works really great. It's really versatile and it's reusable, which is mm -hmm. handy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, as far as uh, bolts and nuts and stuff like that, 316 stainless is fine. Um, there's a few there's a few applications that we'd want to use Hastelloy, but uh, not too many. It's 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 pretty standard. What about pla are there plastics to stay away from as well? Uh, nylon is uh, is one that'll that'll kind of nuke right away. Uh, mm -hmm. And then um, basically kind of any of the cheaper plastics, PET. Uh, I mean anything that you can recycle that's not polyethylene um, is mm -hmm. something that you want to stay. PVC. Yeah, PVC. Anything. You, yeah. Uh, CPVC, we, we've seen do fairly well in some some applications in food plants, uh, but not usually with, with uh, concentrated chemical. Um, that's usually more only for, uh, uh, for at-use concentration kind of stuff. Excellent. You know, um, if I could switch, Phil, to kind of like, you know, this, you can tell that this is a, kind of a regulated chemical, I guess, and there must be industry 
regulations around it. I know you were speaking a little bit about the food industry approvals and regulations, and maybe there's some other industry regulations. Can you speak to what's out there on that kind of stuff? Yeah, so th that's one of the things that EnviroTech does best uh, is um, uh, dealing with uh, uh, registrations and regulations. Uh, we've got 26 EP EPA registrations. We've got 14 FDA food no notifications. Wow. And then uh, most of our PAA products are approved by the FDA, USDA, EPA, FSIS, NOP, Kosher, Omri, and NSF. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, yeah, we do a lot of regulatory stuff, and uh, we are uh, usually really good with technical support when it comes to our customers' needs as well. Well, we mentioned um, the uh, PAA being used for food, raw meat, uh, hard surfaces, uh, wastewater treatment, but also talked a little bit about environmental cleanup um, in using for remediation and one of the reasons is obviously because it's a it's a good chemical for that but it also you don't have uh, that you uh, as much water use as you would with another chemical can you explain that to us real quick just how that works sure yeah um, PAA by nature uh, is very reactive and uh, is not very persistent in the environment um, also, by being very reactive, uh, a lot of times we will have to use less washing or rinsing cycles uh, to get it out of whatever process that it's in. Uh, for example, uh, creameries uh, will use um, a variation of PAA that has nitric acid in it uh, that will eliminate an acid wash step, and it'll also uh, reduce the temperature signific significantly. Uh, laundry, uh, laundry cycles have used less water um, due to PAA and, the, uh, and they've been, been able to scratch the need for steam. Uh, and then also uh, there's, uh, there's been many instances where there's been some pretty major environmental spills uh, that have gotten into the ground, groundwater. Uh, and PAA can most of the time can chase those down and you know, uh, oxidize I th whatever the I thought is. one other thing that was interesting we talked about when you were out, but was the idea of using it in hospitals for mm. uh, sanitizing in the hospitals, and that's a big, big use, correct? Yeah, yeah, PAA, they're, they're using uh, as a hard surface sanitizer, of course. Uh, there's uh, some specialty companies that have, uh, that have been able to get some uh, virus claims, um, which is great, uh, but uh, uh, floors, uh, laundry, uh, and then even um, uh, medical device uh, claims have been made. Uh, we, we sell to a couple of specialty companies that sell PA into uh, endoscope cleaning. Well, you know, if anybody's made it to the end of this podcast, Marshall, I think that they're a PAA expert. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but not actually, because there's actually more to learn uh, that we're learning all the time. Um, and, you know, if people do want to get more information, Phil, like what are some resources and ways that people can learn more if they have questions that we didn't cover today? Well, the best way is on our website, uh, www.envirotech.com. And uh, we, a lot of times we wish people would use it more often. Uh, we have a uh, wealth of information on there, and there's very few uh, players in the industry that are as open with information as we are. So please use the, you know, please use the resource. Uh, we've got uh, uh, frequently asked questions. We've got tables, charts, uh, white papers. Uh, and uh, of course, we've got tech data and labels available uh, without a login uh, uh, for the public to use. So uh, please use it. And Marshall, we've uh, you know been uh, studying the market. Our engineering team is always giving us more information for our website as well. So it's now a chemical position statement for us, and we have recommendations when it comes to the storage. That's right, and we'll have a blog published here within about two weeks. Well, we want to thank you guys and gals for coming uh, and, and, and departing some knowledge to us, or imparting. I don't know which one it is, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, really good. We learned a lot. And again, just as a reminder um, for those folks who are looking for more information, it's www.envirotech.com, um, and we, uh, we appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks for having us.